Okay, I want to take a few minutes to go through and provide a video key for the Google Form uh, activity. So, when you go in, uh, you'll see the link. Click on that, it will open a new tab. Go in for your name. Uh, when you go in there, you're going to select the introduction object option. You're going to choose pie chart, speed, uh, stick to track. You're also going to open this energy tab, the bar graph over here, although it's not in the notes. Uh, then we're going to place the skater high on the ramp on one side, so uh, both wheels place it in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. We're going to go ahead and open the link. Okay, you're going to go intro. You're going to click on the pie chart and speed. And you want to open up the energy tab. Make sure it's paused. Grab your skater. You're going to put them on top of the skater uh, the track. Is so both wheels are on as best they can. Okay. Uh, you're going to press play and put the skater in motion. Observe the skater and the graphs. And then we're going to answer the following questions. So we'll go ahead next. And then we'll actually do that on the simulation. So. We have potential energy up high, no kinetic energy, why it's not moving. Total energy is here. So when I press play, and I'll put it in slow motion just so you can see, I want you to watch what happens to the kinetic energy as it travels and the um, potential energy and how they rotate back and forth. So here we go. So, it's, it's, so we can see the kinetic energy goes up. Potential energy goes down, and then as it goes climbs up the hill, it reverses. What we'll notice is that the total energy bar does not change. Remember, the total energy or mechanical energy is a combination of kinetic and potential. There is no friction, so we're not losing anything for thermal energy. So, and then we kind of have a little bit of gravity, so it's going to slow us down a little bit. But what we see is that this is going the fastest at the bottom of the hill, slowest at the top of the hill. So... When was the skater's potential energy at its highest value? It was when it's at the top of the ramp. You always have the highest potential at the top of the ramp. Uh, when is the skater's kinetic energy at its highest value? So kinetic energy highest at the bottom of the ramp, when it's at the bottom of the hill. What you'll notice is, if we want to watch this again, as kinetic potential energy decreases, kinetic energy increases. So these two things are kind of inverse related. As one goes up, the others go down. And that's going to continue to happen the whole time. So uh, when the scale potential energy is increasing, so potential energy is increasing, kinetic energy is decreasing, at least in this scenario. That's not always true, but in this scenario, it is the good case. Uh, as Now, when he goes on the hills, potential energy does increase. His potential energy decreases because of the fact that he's down the hill. The lower he, the lower he is, the less potential energy he has. Okay, we already opened the energy bar, so what happens to the skater's total energy? And again, as you see, if we let it, let it run, I don't care what happens with potential and kinetic, the total energy does not change. We can't lose energy, it's changing potential kinetic, but we can't change it. So total energy uh, does not change. Uh, when the skater's energy is at the highest value, his speed is. So we're at the bottom of the hill. So what's his speed at the bottom of the hill? It's roughly about 10 meters per second. Uh, when the potential energy is at its highest value, his speed is what? So we're going to go ahead and let him go to the top of the hill. Okay. When he's at the highest hill, basically he's getting ready to roll back down, or she's getting ready to roll back down. Uh, it's around zero. Okay. When you're on the top of the hill of a roller coaster, you don't have a lot of speed, but you have a lot of potential energy. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to change the skater. Well, it doesn't really matter who it is. Let's change their mass. So they're right now they're at 60 kilograms. We're going to make them add 100 kilograms. And we'll see what happened when I changed. They were at 60. Watch what happens to the total energy. Because they have more mass, they have more total energy. So if I let them go, we still see a top speed of around 10. But when we see that we did change the mass, the total energy increased. So once again, 
Skier, skier's potential energy is the highest at the top of the ramp before they go. As they're shoveling down, they have the highest kinetic energy at the bottom of the ramp. Uh, what you notice is as potential energy increases, kinetic energy decreases. Uh, as kinetic energy increases as it goes down the hill, potential energy decreases because it's lower down the hill. However, no matter how that's changing, what we did notice is the total energy doesn't change. It may fluctuate between potential and kinetic, but the energy itself does not change. Uh, when he was going as fastest, his speed was around 10 meters per second. At the top of the hill, when his potential energy was the highest, he was going about 0 meters per second, not really moving at all. Uh, and then finally, when we changed the mass of the uh, skater to a larger setting, we noticed that his total energy increased. More mass means he has more energy to give as he goes down that hill. All right, next page. Okay, so this time we're going to go ahead and click to reset it, and we're going to change some settings to a, an L kind of track. So we're going to kind of keep the same things. I didn't understand okay, that. Okay, I'm not talking to you. Sorry, my phone's having a problem. So let's pause them. We're going to change the track to just an L. Make sure our pie chart speed, stick to track is all on, our energy graph is on, speed charts on. We're going to place her on top of the hill. And we notice the higher we put her up, the more potential energy they have. And where are they getting it from? Well, it's from us because we put it up there. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're going to press play and we're going to um, see what happens. So potential energy is high, no kinetic energy because it's not moving, and no speed. But that's where it go. All right, so as potential energy decreased, kinetic energy increased, total energy didn't change. So what was the scarce potential at its highest value? When it's at the top of the hill, before it goes, is where it has the highest potential energy. Where is it at the uh, high, kinetic energy at the highest? It's at the bottom of the hill. It was about 10.4. Why doesn't the skater's potential energy increase again like it did in the U-shaped track? Well, again, he's not going. she's not going up. When It was when they went up, they built up potential energy. They're storing energy because they're working against gravity. All she did was go from the top of the hill all the way down. There's no way for her to build that potential energy up again. If you were to change tracks and did this, this would be a chance for you to build up some potential energy, kinetic energy, and then this would be difficult to pull off. And you can play around with these all you want when we're done. But what we noticed is, why doesn't the skater's potential energy increase? Because they're not going uphill. They're not storing any more energy. So once again, when we change it to an L-shaped track, our potential energy is the highest at the top of the hill. Uh, kinetic energy is the highest value at the bottom of the hill. Why doesn't the skater's potential energy increase, like in the u ramp? Because it's not going up, so it's not storing any energy. Okay, uh, this time we're going to change a little adjustment. We're going to reset, reset the simulation, put on our pie chart, our speed, and our energy. This time we're going to just do a little bit of friction, maybe about halfway. So we're going to add some friction. Remember, friction is that force that opposes all motion. And we're going to watch what happens when we apply friction. And another thing you want to watch is, ah! Another thing you want to watch is, okay, so here's the total energy. It's never go, going to go beyond that. But watch what happens. We have a new tab here. Remember, friction is the force that opposes all motion. So as it's opposing all motion, it's going to change some of that thermal, uh, that uh, friction into thermal energy. So I want you to watch the bars, what happens, and watch the overall path. I'll go in slow motion if that helps. So we see thermal energy is increasing. Now, the total energy doesn't change. Didn't go as high as it did, but because that friction is slowing it down, it can't get up as high on the ramp, which means it can't build up as much potential energy. As it travels down, it loses kinetic energy, as, well, it changes kinetic energy to thermal energy. And if I had to guess, when that thermal energy is the, to is the same as that total energy bar, that means that skater is going to be stopping moving. And we see that with friction on, they slow down a little bit each time. Why? Because friction is slowing them down. They can't build up as much potential energy which means they don't have as much uh, kinetic energy as they're going down. And eventually, what we'll see is when the thermal energy reaches the same as the um, total energy, we will be um, done. They'll be stopped moving. 
So why doesn't the skater continue to move back and forth as he's in the first simulator? Friction is slowing them down. Okay, you can't lose energy. We're transferring that energy from motion into uh, friction, which turns into thermal energy. Okay, what happens to the amount of kinetic energy and potential energy over time? They both decrease. They both go down. Okay, now that we're done, we see they're still moving a little bit, but we have very little kinetic, very little potential. So according to the law of conservation of energy, energy cannot be destroyed. So what happens to the kinetic, potential, kinetic and potential energy? Watch the bar graph carefully. They cancel each other out. They are changed to thermal energy or they disappear into the ramp. Well, if we look, almost all of our energy now has been changed into thermal energy. And that's actually going to be waste energy because we will lose that into the atmosphere. It still exists, but we're not using it. And now she's just going to turn back and forth, not even that. So now she stopped because thermal energy is equal to total. So they change into thermal energy. That's what's happening to our energy. Uh, we're going to reset the simulation, or you don't have to reset the simulation. Just change your friction to lots, and we can pull them up, and we're going to see how this happens at a much faster rate. So that thermal energy is going to increase. Look how much thermal energy is increasing already. We have a lot of friction, so like a rougher track is going to slow you down. It won't take nearly as long for them to uh, slow down to a stop as the last time because friction is higher. So, well, how will the trial be different now that we increase friction? Will the skater move faster due to the increased friction and better traction? Will the skater move slower as some of his kinetic energy is changing the thermal energy? What we saw is the skater moved a lot slower and that kinetic energy was changing the thermal energy very quickly. Um, now, you are done with the, the lab, but I really want you to play around with this. It's, it's an interesting thing. There aren't a lot of great... Um, there are not a lot of really good um, roller coaster simulations. There used to be a lot better. But here, do a couple things. You can do pie chart. I mean, watch the, how the energy changes. Um, you can change the track. Make it a loop. Okay. Pause it. Now, here's something you can do as well, is you can change the stick to track. Right now, they'll stick to the track. If I press play, she'll probably make the loop. Okay, so let's do this, though. Let's decrease your potential energy a little bit. Okay, so since she's not as high, she's not getting as much potential energy, which means she can't build up as kinetic energy, won't be going as fast. Let's see what happens with this. Oh, that was impressive. That was a good trick. So you can see at what point they can't make the track. Although they really guess they can't fall off the track. You can go ahead and change the riders if you want. Put a dog on there. Less mass. See what happens. Okay. Uh, you can change the mass of the guy. You can change the rider if you want. Play around with it as much as you want. Just kind of get the experience of how things change between potential and kinetic. Remember, we're not losing any thermal energy because we have no friction. Add friction. Now we got thermal energy galore because that energy is being changed into it. All right. Make sure you submit. Uh, hopefully that helps you. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out to me during study hall. But hopefully that will give you an explanation of how the lab works for today. Have a great day.